Good day everyone and welcome to the world of nano. On this module, we will learn about engineered nanomaterials and apply what we have learned from module 3.1 to module 3.3. At the end of this module, you should be able to define nanotechnology, identify discoveries and milestones in nanotechnology, describe two fundamental approaches in the synthesis of nanomaterials, classify nanomaterials based on their origin, dimension, and composition, and identify applications of nanomaterials in different engineering fields. Ever wonder if you have your own invisibility cloak? Whoa! My body's gone! I know what that is! That's an invisibility cloak! Is it magic? Well, good news muggles, invisibility cloaks are real and not simply an altered reality and camera tricks. In 2017, a post has gathered a lot of attention after Shen Chik, who claimed to be the Deputy Director of Criminal Investigation Bureau of the Ministry of Public Security in China, has posted a video showing a real-life invisibility cloak. Though Shen Chik is appeared to be the real Deputy Director of the Criminal Investigation Bureau in China, this video does not appear on the official government website and hence question the authenticity of this invisibility cloak. Researchers from the University of Rochester, on the other hand, have devised a close to reality invisibility cloak by using a flat screen display to widen the range of angles that can be hidden from the view. The idea is to pass light around the material as if it isn't there. In 2019, Hyperstilt Biotechnology's invisibility cloak, called Quantum Stilt, can make an object or person close to invisible to the naked eye. Though this technology is still under prototyping stage, this was developed primarily for military purposes, so that it can conceal agents and equipment such as tanks and jets. So how do we make an object invisible? One method is the mirage effect, or photothermal deflection, similar to the tales of desert wanderers who glimpsed a distant oasis only to discover it was only a mirage and there was no drinking water. Another method is the bending of light, as what the researchers from the University of Rochester have made. Hyperstate biotechnology, on the other hand, uses metamaterials to obtain the invisibility effect. Metamaterials are artificially engineered materials that does not occur in nature. The complex structure is composed of micro and nanoscale. As Iron Man have said, Where'd that come from? It's nanotech, you like it? So what is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is the application of nanoscale materials for different applications. While nanoscience, it is the understanding of the properties of the materials at the nanoscale dimension. Nanoscale dimension refers to the nanometer range. A nanometer is equal to one billionth of a meter. To imagine how small one nanometer is, if we consider a pinhead, it is one million times the size of a one nanometer particle. If we consider human hair, it is 100,000 times the size of a one nanometer particle. In principle, Nanomaterial are described as materials with length of 1 to 1,000 nanometer. However, the widely accepted range is between 1 and 100 nanometer in at least one dimension. This range is also the quantum regime and is the reason why many nanomaterials exhibit quantum effects that make them suitable for electronics, semiconductor technologies, and quantum technologies. Examples of nanomaterials are nanoparticles, which are spherical in shape. Aerogel, which is an ultralight material with extremely low density and extremely low thermal conductivity. Nanorods, with aspect ratio less than 1,000, but normally 3 to 5. Nanowars, with aspect ratio greater than 1,000. Nanobelts, where the cross section is rectangular. Nanotubes, a wire like morphology that is hollow at the middle. Nanoplates, and nanosheets. These nanomaterials can, can be classified according to its dimension, where nanoparticles are considered as 0D. Nanorods, nanowars, nanobelts, and nanotubes are considered as 1D. 
nanoplates and nanosheets are considered as 2D, while aerogel is considered as 3D nanomaterials. 0D nanomaterials have all dimensions at nanometer scale, that is up to 100 nanometer. 1D nanometer have two dimension at the nanoscale and one dimension at the macro scale. On the other hand, 2D have one dimension at the nanoscale and two dimensions at macro scale. While 3D have no dimension at nanoscale, however, its structure is composed of particles with nanoscale like that of the aerogel. 0D, 1D, 2D, and 3D nanomaterials are composed of a single compound. If the nanomaterial is composed of two or more compounds with at least one phase on the nanoscale dimension, it is called nanocomposites. Nanocomposite can be classified into two, the polymer-based, where at least one of the components is polymer, and non-polymer-based, where all the components are either metal or ceramics. On the other hand, if a material has a surface structure or pattern in nanoscale dimension, it is called nanostructured materials. One application of nanostructured material is a superhydrophobic coating. Surfaces such as cars and clothes will not easily get wet or dirt. Ketchup will not stick to the bottle and can easily be poured out. And surprisingly, using hydrophobic coating, water can be cut into two. Hydrophobic coating have water contact angle equal or greater than 150 degrees, which means that water droplets will form beads, whirl off, or even bounce off the surface. Superhydrophobic surfaces are patterned from nature, which is called biomimetics, where materials or machines will have a function that mimics the biological processes. Superhydrophobic surfaces are common in nature, such as the wings of the butterfly, the back of the duck, and the lotus leaf. The surface of the lotus leaf have a microscale protruding knobs covered with nanomaterial with low surface energy. This concept was adopted to produce an artificial superhydrophobic surfaces, one of which is a study conducted by Han et al. where they use an ultrafast laser to fabricate micro and nano hierarchical structure on metal surfaces with tunable microcones and produce abundant nanostructure with high durability. In Germany, they have a unique application of superhydrophobic coatings. They coat it in walls to make anti-urination wall that feed back. Nanotechnology has been present and was utilized before it was known. The history of nanomaterials are divided into two, the pre-modern examples and the examples after the discoveries and developments that enable nanotechnology in modern era. The pre-modern examples are the nanomaterials which were produced based on the craftsman empirical understanding and manipulation of material such as heating. One example of which is the glycrocoscope. When illuminated and observed on the same side, it reflected the color green. While when it was illuminated and observed on the opposite side, it transmits the color red. The secret to the dicogoscope is the dispersed gold nanoparticles on the material. It was found that even minute amount of gold nanoparticles can yield to the dichroic effect. The difference in color is due to the different scattering and absorption behavior of small and large gold nanoparticles. In 6th to 15th century, the gold and silver nanoparticles of different sizes were used to produce different colored stained glasses. The medieval artisans discovered that by adding gold chloride to molten glass resulted in red tint, while adding silver nitrate turned the glass yellow. Recent scientists found that this technique resulted to gold and silver nanoparticles, acting as quantum dots that reflect red and yellow lights. In 2008, a team from Queensland University of Technology have discovered that when these nanoparticles are lit up by sunlight, they act as a photocatalytic air purifiers. In 9th to 17th century, copper and other metallic nanoparticles were utilized as ceramic pieces. During those times, alchemists are doing a lot of researches to turn any metal into gold. Though they were not able to produce gold, they produce different metallic nanoparticles.
In 13th to 18th century, the legendary Damascus sword was developed. They were strong yet flexible and supremely sharp, which European warrior first discovered, much to their misfortune, at the hands of Muslims during the Crusades. The recipe for making Damascus seal was lost in history, since the method was only passed down from the master to his apprentice. However, in the 21st century, it was observed under electron microscope that the Damascus sword contains both carbon nanotube and cementite nanowires, which causes its watery and wavy light and dark patterns. Recent discoveries and inventions led to the modern era examples of nanotechnology. During this period, sophisticated equipment are used to understand and explain the concept of nanotechnology. In 1857, Michael Faraday explored the colloidal ruby gold. At different nanometer size, gold transmit and reflect different colors. His research is the first scientific report that describes nanoparticle preparation. Erwin Muller is the first person to experimentally observe atoms. He invented field emission microscope or FEM in 1936, allowing near atomic resolution images of the material. But he did not stop here. In 1951, he invented field ion microscope, or, or FIM, with higher resolution. This equipment can be used to image the arrangement of atoms at the surface of a sharp metal tip. Richard Feynman was an American theoretical physicist, known for his work in the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics, the theory of quantum electrodynamics, the physics of the superfluidity of supercooled liquid helium, as well as his work in particle physics. Due to his contribution to the development of quantum electrodynamics, Feynman received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1965. Feynman was a keen popularizer of physics through both books and lectures, including a 1959 talk on top-down nanotechnology called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom at an American Physical Society meeting at the California Institute of Technology. In his talk, Feynman described a process in which scientists will be able to manipulate and control individual atoms and molecules. Despite the original concept being proposed by Richard Feynman, the term nanotechnology for the first time used in 1974 by Professor Norio Taniguchi. However, in that period, the term is not as well known as it is in present times. Kim Eric Drexler was highly influenced by concept presented by Feynman. In 1986, he referred to the term of nanotechnology in his book entitled Engines of Creation, The Coming Era of Nanotechnology. The original concept of assembling a nanoscale was first proposed in this book. According to this concept, controlling at atomic level should be attained in order to replicate it. The Foresight Institute was founded by Drexler in the same year, which boosts the popularity of his book, and thus the term nanotechnology became a well-known term in that period. It wasn't until 1981, with the development of the scanning tunneling microscope, or SEM, that we could see individual atoms, which marked the beginning of the modern nanotechnology. STM was invented by Gerd Binnig and Heinrich Rohrer, which both received Nobel Prize in Physics in 1986. Without their study, no further research would have been possible. Using STM in 1989, researchers from IBM were the first in history to move and control individual atoms. They moved xenon atoms across a surface, one at a time, and precisely positioned them to spell out IBM. So how do they do it?
In a significant move forward, in the march toward creating electronic circuits that are thousands of times smaller than today's most advanced technology, IBM is announcing a milestone in the ability to manipulate and understand matter at the atomic level. Scientists at IBM's Almaden Research Center in San Jose, California, have for the first time demonstrated the ability to measure exactly how much force is needed to move individual atoms. In the same year where Binig and Rohrer, the inventors of SEM, was awarded with Nobel Prize in Physics, a major breakthrough was made in with the invention of the Atomic Force Microscope, or AFM, by Binning, Quaid, and Gerber, which continues to revolutionize nanoscale characterization and measurements ever since. Quantum dots are nanoscale crystals that can transport electrons. When UV light hit these semiconducting nanoparticles, they can emit light of various colors. These artificial semiconductor nanoparticles have found applications in composite, solar cells, and fluorescent biological labels. At the end of the 1970s, Russian physicist Alexei Ekimenov synthesized nanocrystals of copper chloride and cadmium selenide in a molded glass matrix where he observed a fluorescence in a gradient of colors. These first observations were published in 1980. Bachminister fullerene or Bachable is a type of fullerene with a formula C60. It has a cage-like fuse ring structure that resembles a soccer ball, made of 20 hexagons and 12 pentagons. Each carbon atom has three bonds. It is a black solid that dissolves in hydrocarbon solvent to produce a violet solution. The compound has received intense study, although few real-world applications have been found. Buckyball was first generated in 1984 by Eric Ruffling, Donald Cox, and Andrew Caldord using a laser to vaporize carbon in a supersonic helium beam. In 1985, their work was repeated by Kroto, O'Brien, Curl, and Smalley at Rice University. They recognize the structure of C60 as back minister fullerene. This is why Kroto, Curl, and Smalley were awarded the 1996 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their roles in the discovery of back minister fullerene and the related class of molecules, the fullerenes. Another member of fullerene is the carbon nanotube, also called Bucky tube, which is a nanoscale hollow tube composed of carbon atoms. Carbon nanotubes, or CNTs, are cylindrical large molecules consisting of a hexagonal arrangement of hybridized carbon atoms, which may be formed by rolling up a single sheet of graphene called single-walled carbon nanotubes or by rolling up multiple sheets of graphene called multi-walled carbon nanotubes. One property of nanotube is that they are really, really strong. The tensile strength of carbon nanotube is approximately 100 times greater than that of steel of the same diameter. CNT are also very elastic. Though it takes a lot of force to bend it, it will instantly spring back to its original shape when released, like rubber bonds. In addition, carbon nanotubes are also lightweight, with a density about one quarter that of steel. CNT also conduct heat and cold really well. They have a high thermal conductivity. Some researchers predict a thermal conductivity more than eight times that of copper. However, only one-third of carbon nanotubes have electrical properties like metals, and two-thirds behaves like semiconductors. It was not until 1999 to early 2000 that nanomaterials were applied for practical application for commercialized products such as car bumpers, golf balls, tennis rockets, and other applications. In 1999, the first nanomedicine book was published with Freitas. In this book, he wrote about the application of nanomaterials in medicine. In 2000, President Clinton launched the National Nanotechnology Initiative, or NNI, to promote U.S. competitiveness in nanotechnology.
In 2004, Kenji Yamazaki and Hideo Namatsu, in their published paper in Japan Journal of Applied Physics, they were able to fabricate the world's smallest globe using electron beam. And in 2010, IBM fabricated the nanoscale 3D relief map of the world, which holds the Guinness World Record for the smallest 3D map of the Earth. The map has 500,000 pixels, which was fabricated in only 2 minutes and 23 seconds. The sample was too small that 1,000 of which could fit in a grain of salt. In 2006, James Tour and researchers from Rice University has developed nanoscale core, which is made of an H-shaped molecule with buckyballs attached at the four corners that act as a wheel. When the sample displaced in gold substrate was heated to 200 degrees Celsius, the molecules move back and forth as they roll on their fullerene wheels. In 2017, the world's first international molecular car race was held, where the team from U.S. Australia won the race out of the six contestants. According to Dr. So Waila, they aim to develop a controlled transport system at the molecular scale as well as to help create a new field of study that is a quantum mechanical engineering that is only at the early stage. If a nanocore can be mass-produced and controlled, particularly a lot of them at once, they can be used to build or reconstruct electronic circuit and data storage devices. A nano-sized data storage device will revolutionize the industry. In 2013, IBM made the smallest movie entitled A Boy and His Atom. This movie holds the Guinness World Record for the smallest stop-motion film. The researchers moved carbon monoxide molecule using SEM to make the film. Nanomaterials can either be found in nature or can be artificially synthesized. Hence, we can classify nanomaterials based on their origin. The first one is a natural nanomaterial, which is found in nature through anthropogenic activities and by biological species such as the nanostructure of the wings of the butterfly that causes its vibrant colors, and the foot of gecko that can attach to any surface. There are also incidental nanomaterials. These nanomaterials are not intended to be produced and must form as a byproduct of an industrial processes such as vehicle engine exhaust, welding fumes, combustion process, and plasma and ozone treatments. The third classification of nanomaterial based on their origin is the synthetic nanomaterials or the engineered nanomaterials, which is the focus of this module. Synthetic nanomaterials are artificially produced nanomaterials. Engineered nanomaterials are synthesized by either top-down or bottom-up approach. In top-down, nanoparticles are formed by breaking or structuring from bulk material such as bulk milling and lithography. While bottom-up approach, nanoparticles are formed from single atoms or molecule which bind together to form nanoparticles, an example of which is chemical synthesis where the precursors or compounds were reduced using reducing agents such as sodium borohydride to form individual atoms that bind together to form the nanoparticles. Large-scale production is favorable in top-down approach since chemical purification or removal of impurities are no longer necessary. However, the produced nanoparticles have very wide range of size distribution. On the other hand, the bottom-up approach has a narrow size distribution but is very difficult for mass production and it requires purification process. In bottom-up approach, 
nanoparticles grow due to the difference in surface energy. As we all know, surface energy is the sum of all the excess energy of the surface atoms. For liquid, the surface energy is also the surface tension. If we consider the atom in the bulk of the liquid, there is a zero net force since it is surrounded by other atoms. On the other hand, for the surface atoms, since it is at the border, there will be a net attractive force pointing towards the solution, which we refer to as the surface tension. In solids or crystals, the surface atoms possesses higher energy since they are less tightly bounded, while atoms in the bulk possesses lower energy since they are much tightly bounded. To further explain, let us consider this 2D structure. From what you have learned from Module 3.2, the coordination number of our CN number of the bulk atom, which are colored yellow, is equal to 4. Since the neighboring atoms are the number of atoms surrounding it is 4. To determine the surface energy, we need to determine the number of lost band or lost coordination number. If we consider the corner atoms or green colored spheres, the lost band is equal to 2. If we consider along the sides the red colored sphere, the lost band is only 1. The corner atoms have higher surface energy than the side atoms since the higher the lost band or lost coordination number of the surface atom, the higher the surface energy. Going back to the growth mechanism, if we consider an anisotropic crystal structure, if the surface energy of the basal plane is lower than the surface energy of the side plane, 2D nanomaterials will be formed. On the other hand, if the basal plane have higher surface energy than the side planes, 1D nanomaterials will be formed such as nanorods or nanowars. An example of an anisotropic crystal structure is thin. Based on the DFT calculation performed by Xiao et al., the side plane has lower surface energy than the basal plane. So the particle will grow along the basal plane and form the 1D nanomaterial. You may ask, does the size of the material really matters? Well, if we consider a cube with 1 cm by 1 cm by 1 cm, the total surface area is 6 by 10 to negative 4 meters squared. However, if we divide this cube into smaller cube, let's say 1 nanometer by 1 nanometer by 1 nanometer, the surface area will increase by 10 million fold. So what if the surface area increases? What will happen to the material? Here are some of the materials with altered property as the size decreases. Copper, the one we use in wires, are known to be conductive and opaque. However, at nanoscale, it becomes transparent but still retains good conductivity. Several studies have been done to produce an electroconductive transparent ink using copper nanoparticles to replace the expensive electroconductive silver nano inks. Another example is the platinum. Platinum is a noble metal that is inert by nature. However, at nanoscale, it becomes catalytic. It can catalyze the ignition of hydrogen gas. It can also catalyze the reaction of a toxic carbon monoxide with oxygen to produce a less harmful carbon dioxide. Aluminum is commonly used in door or window screen due to its lightweight and stability, where it won't produce rust like steels. However, at nanoscale, Aluminum can combust easily upon in contact with air and moisture. As we have discussed, gold changes its color from yellow to other colors depending on its size. In addition, even though bulk gold is solid at room temperature, nanoscale gold is liquid at room temperature. Another example is silicon. Though silicon are widely used in semiconductor, such as wafers, to produce solar panels, Bulk silicon without any dopant or impurities or insulators by nature. However, at nanoscale, silicon becomes conductive, which is why it's a good candidate as anode material for lithium ion battery.
nanomaterials can also be classified according to its composition. Carbon nanomaterials has a lot of aliotropes. Hence, the first classification is the carbon-based nanomaterials. From the word itself, it should be composed of carbon atoms. It can range from 0D to 3D nanomaterials. The second is the inorganic-based nanomaterials. These nanomaterials are composed of metals and metal oxide nanomaterials with various shapes. And last but not the least, the organic-based nanomaterials. Organic nanomaterials are made mostly by organic material such as polymers and DNAs. These organic-based nanomaterials are commonly used for drug delivery or for medical purposes. Since the early times, nanomaterials have a wide range of applications. In the field of chemical engineering, nanomaterials can be used in so many applications such as catalysts, sensors, coatings, absorption, drug delivery, etc. In civil engineering, it can be used to improve the concrete used in roads to prevent flooding. Nanomaterials can also be used as fire retardant, and also, it can be used as self-healing concrete. In electrical engineering, nanomaterials can be used to improve the electrical conductivity as well as improve the performance of the insulators. In electronics engineering, researchers have found that the incorporation of nanoparticles into optical fibers have allowed for advantageous features, such as improved refractive index and an ability to manipulate light, to be incorporated in novel communications, sensing, computation, biological, and chemistry devices. Nanomaterial also also applied to produce the transparent electronics, wearable electronics, and flexible electronics. And for mechanical engineering, it can be applied for nanofluids and electric vehicle. If everything goes well, a new field of study that is a quantum mechanical engineering will be implemented. This is the end of this lecture video. I hope you enjoy and learn about nanotechnology and nanomaterial. If you have any questions or clarifications, please feel free to contact your respective instructors.